Hey everybody, Tim Brzezinski here. In this quick screencast, I'm going to show you how to use iReady's Multiplication Models tool that can be found in the Digital Math Tool section of the iReady Teacher Toolbox. Students also have access to this tool as well when they log in and they see the icons at the buttons at the bottom. There's a tool section they could access down there at any time they're working on problems within iReady Classroom or within Teacher Assigned Lessons. All right, so let's open it up and see. And it's very simple to use. Notice here the increments. That's the most important piece. Here we have here we have tenths, ones, and tens. So let's take a peek and see. All right. So let's look at this problem here. It says folding chairs are set up in a school auditorium for a play. There's 15 rows of chairs. Each row, I mean the number was 16, but I changed it to 15, and you'll see why in a second. All right. But again, the principle is the same here. Each row has 28 chairs. How many folding chairs are set up for the play? All right, so obviously as teachers, we want our students to know they have to multiply these two numbers. That's imperative, right? And once they make that, once they have that recognition, how do we go about actually multiplying them, All right? So um, we're actually going to, I'm going to choose the, the single units here. 28 is not that bad of a number, right? When I click on it, notice I, can, I have a square here and I can start making an array. So each row, it says right here, is 28 chairs. So let's make a row of 28. Each square is one chair, right? And it says I have 15 rows. All right, so let's make two rows, three rows. We'll go down to 15 rows. Okay? Now, the number of squares in that rectangle is definitely the answer to our question, right? But we don't want students counting every single square, you know, for a few minutes. We want them to work smart, not hard. So that's where this tool comes into play right here. We can decompose that rectangle uh, right here. So let's click on it, and you'll notice when you do, you see gray lines appear. If you drag gray lines to the left, you'll now see, ah, I can, I can break up 28 into a, into a sum, right? I mean, 20 and 8 makes sense. But if I really wanted to, I can keep going here and bring this down to 10, and I could also make a third one right here. I mean, 10 and 10 and 8, if you wanted to, you totally could. But um, I think 20 and 8 might, is not that bad, right? So we can go it uh, vertically, but we could also break it up horizontally as well. I mean, having a 10 there wouldn't be bad, right? Mm -hmm. So we have 10, 10 right there. And so now, okay, we can actually try to figure out how many squares, you know, doing it this way. Well, gee, 20 by 10, that's 200. I'm just using the pen tool here. Oh, well, an 8 by 10 is 80, right? And this is how we want kids to reason conceptually here. We have another 100 right here, and that's, uh, what, 40? So what's the grand sum? We have 200, 300, 380, and so really 380, and another 40, right? Well, gee, 38 tens, 38 tens, and 4 tens, that's 42 tens, and 42 times 10 is 420, right? So I think that's the answer to our question, right? So we can actually verify that it is if we uh, hit these buttons down here. You know, we could see the partial products right there that'll give us the answers and finally show us what the actual answer is. So there it is missing, filled in, and C is just the answer in and of itself, if that makes sense. Okay, so it's a pretty powerful tool. You could have kids break up uh, decomposed rectangles in a bunch of different ways. Let's take a look at one more here. All right, so uh, Jaden made a rectangular sign that is one and four tenths meters long and one and two tenths meters wide to post on the wall of his store. So how many square meters is this? So now here's a case where we might want to increment now by one-tenth instead of once. So let's actually hit the refresh icon to erase all our work and start over. All right? So hit the tenth. And look at what, you see, look what we see here. It's pretty cool. Right? Notice you can actually, uh, you, have a, a, you have one one-hundredth right there. And we could actually go here and just make it bigger. It's one and four tenths meters long. It's one and two tenths meters wide. So here's the width I'm adjusting. See, I'm beyond one right now. And then I can go beyond one meter long by just keep going vertically. See what I mean? Now I can actually, I could doodle over it and think, wow, conceptually, that's one right there, right? That's, that's one square meter right there. And now I could try to count, say, the rest of them, if you will. Or, why not use the tools here? We could still do the same thing. Let's hit the partition tool there and partition it up. Now, it, it makes the squares disappear when you do this, but you can see it now, right? Let's go one meter down this way. 
if that makes sense. So we could use our pen tool again. The right. Ah, there's our, there's our one square meter. There's what two? There's uh, that's two tenths or twenty hundredths of a square meter right there. Here's four tenths or forty hundredths, right? And again, here is it might be the tricky part for some students that that's eight hundredths and not eight tenths, right? But lo and behold, if I just look at it this way, right, I have one and six tenths, so it looks like one and sixty-eight hundredths uh, square meters, if you will. All right. So again, eggs out of there. We can see, right, the the uh, partial pro the partial products there, and then yeah, if I make this bigger, you'll be able to see it's one and uh, one and sixty-eight hundredths there. So again, um, a great tool for students to use. They can actually. Um, Again, if you go vertically, you could break it up in three ways. Horizontally, only two. Um, but yeah, so that is the uh, that's this tool here in iReady Classroom.